Hi everybody, my name is Cade Webster. I'm one of the automation specialists with IGIS Incorporated and RBTX. And today we'll be discussing the installation of your Delta robot into the frame, as well as the connection of the Delta robot to the IGIS robot control and the incorporation of your end of arm tool to the robot. First, we're gonna start with the overall structure that you've assembled for your Delta. Many of you will receive the Delta pre-assembled in a compact transport rack. If you receive the Delta disassembled, please refer to the instruction manual on how to properly assemble your Delta. Now that you've got your Delta pre-assembled and your frame set, we're ready to attach the Delta to the frame. Your primary modes of attachment will be hex nuts installed into the roof or slots of your profile. You'll start with the end of the Delta robot with two notched ends on one end of the triangle. Attach one and then use the far end of the Delta robot to swing your frame into loose nuts on the other side. We recommend starting with two pairs of hands on this. Once you have the Delta robot secured with three or more bolts, you should be able to accomplish this with one set of hands. Before tightening all of the bolts, be sure to measure and make sure everything is set to where you need it to be. Even if the Delta robot is not attached in the correct orientation, that is, you have rotated it 60, or 120 degrees from its intended orientation, this can be fixed in the software. Now that we have the Delta attached to the frame, we can begin connecting it to the IGIS robot controller. The IGIS robot control comes pre-assembled with motor modules and cables already wired in on the controller end. So, not a lot of work for you to do there. You can double check the wiring, however, we should have already double checked it here in the facility, so you should be good to go. Each of the axes comes with three cables. One motor cable, one encoder cable, and one limit switch cable. Motor cables are identified by their five pin dark blue sheath. Encoder cables are a thicker gray eight or nine pin sheath. And then the initiator is a very thin wire, navy blue three pin M8 connection. They should all be labeled by axis. So motor three is M3, encoder three is ENC3, and limit switch three is any three. You'll have three axes on this Delta robot. Some robots have two. Starting with axis one, begin connecting to the appropriate connection points. Okay, motor and encoder cables are M12, directly on the motor chassis. The limit switch will attach to the side of each of the actuators. Push it as close to the end block on the upper side as you possibly can. Then, using the M5 slot nuts located in the side of the actuator, use the hardware provided to attach the bracket and the limit switch to the side of the actuator. Then, attach your M8 connection to the plug on the side of the initiator. Then repeat this process. If axis one is here, axis two should be directly counterclockwise here, axis three there. You can find this in the manual as well. Now that we've connected our Delta robot physically and electrically, we're ready to power up the cabinet to begin the startup sequence. We'll start by supplying the cabinet with power, flipping on the power switch. We'll know the cabinet is thinking when the lights begin blinking. Excellent. So, red LEDs indicate errors, yellow LEDs indicate referencing or state changes, and green LEDs indicate a good power and CAN connection. Do a quick check to make sure all fans are running on the modules, the PLC, as well as the cabinet wall. And then we can begin initial configuration. Using an ethernet cable, connect to the Raspberry Pi inside the cabinet and back to your computer. Open up the IRC software and connect to your robot. Select the correct type of robot and hit the connect button. You'll know the connection was successful when you're met with a green light and no error. If a red light appears, you may need to reference the robot first. Go to the reference tab and hit reference all. A successful reference will be met with motion on the robot, followed by fully referenced notes from each axis. 
After referencing, the motors will be disabled, so be sure to re-enable them before checking your axes. We can make sure we've attached the axes correctly by going to the jogging tab and moving one axis at a time. Axis one, two, counterclockwise from that, and three, counterclockwise again. You're now ready to program. Now that we've physically connected our Delta robot, we are electrically connected, we're all wired up and ready to program, it's time to attach our end of arm tools and extra rotary effects. Inside your standard cabinet, there are three motor modules for the base axes, one, two, and three. Note the CAN IDs on the yellow CAN wheel, zero, two, and four. Your IO modules will always be the last modules in the stack, starting again with CAN ID zero. We've already added an extra motor module for a rotary axis. To install yourself, simply move the I.O. module away from the rest of the units, snap your new motor module on, and sandwich them all back together. The CAN connection is made with a hidden connector against the gin rail, so there's no need for external connections to be made by you. Time to physically attach our end of arm tool. Most tools will use their own pattern or an isometric standard. The end of the Delta robot uses a NEMA 17 standard pattern. So, we'll have provided an adapter plate, this black item, to manage any differences between the bolt pattern of the tool and the Delta robot. You can start by attaching your tool to the flange that we provided. Be sure to install any bolts to the adapter plate first, then attach to the Delta robot. You can hand tighten first. Be sure to fasten to spec. When we supply an end of arm tool that requires electrical connections, we will have already given the correct cable to attach to both the tools plug as well as the IGUS robot control cabinet. Make the connection while the cabinet is off. Never hot plug electrical devices. Once you've made the correct connection, be sure to wire in the outputs for the gripper to the appropriate digital outputs on the I.O. bank. Once everything is set and you've double checked your wiring, attach the end of arm tool and turn on the power. You're now ready to realize your application. If you have any questions about operation of the robot, electrical connections, or troubleshooting, please feel free to reach out to us or follow the links below for more information. Happy automating with RBTX and thanks so much for watching.